even the jungler, Kobe, and this is a champion pick that will be reverberated around the world. Paris losing their minds. And I said attack damage, Papa Smith. Uh, you're right. That is attack damage for you. Looks like at the last second, you have to wait till 20 seconds, actually, for the last swap to come through, but it could be either of the solo laners here. Expecting it to be a top, a mid lane choice as Ryze beats Gangplank. Waiting for it, we get the confirmation. Will be Pike mid lane against Nautilus. Final Plus Phoenix versus G2 Esports. The team compositions are locked in. Caps is running it in the mid lane. In game number one. Now, we have to go over some of the unique things about Pike because it was even nerfed since G2 last used it in a prolific manner among all these lanes. The AoE is much less so. This Pike is not about winning lane, by the way. This is about the Rome game. Caps and Duan B setting up teammates, sharing gold, and creating plays. And the crazy thing is, even though it's been dominant, the Nautilus is too. It's a resolve. We are back on Summoner's Rift for the 2019 World Final. Kobe and Papa Smith, thank you so much for setting up those expectations on both team comps. Papa, can I ask for a quick refresher? Because it was about five minutes ago that we last heard it from the team. Absolutely, with FPX, it is very much a mid to late game team fight comp, but it's at the price of early laning phase. I think there's a lot of inroads that can be made in top and bot lane here for G2. As King Goon finds Wonder, Tian backing him up. Okay, Sonic Wave will find him down. Flash is available. He's not going to be able to get away just yet. They're not needed. And it should take some damage. Looking at the minimap, no responses yet. Now, it's incredibly important to Look at the aftermath of this invade. It is a split map here. FBX trying to invade on the top side and take away red buff here. G2 doing the same on bottom side. Defensive vision has been in place. It's very often that we'll see FBX go for these lane splitting strategies at the cost of their bot lane, but with Civit Thresh, you weren't expecting lane dominance anyway. So they seem to be wanting to give breathing room to the gangplank. Ryze can't take aggressive trades with no jungler top side. It's exactly as we mentioned in Champion Select. The gangplank is very vulnerable to dives early on. Ryze can use the range advantage and go for that. But bottom side of the map, FBX are trying to defend against the even split map. Usually, you'll have red traded for red side, but Crisp denies the Krug camp, the one with the most experience and gold on it in the entire map. Actually, in the G2 Griffin series in groups, saw how a delay in scenarios like this can have huge cascading effects on lanes as the jungler isn't there at level three at the same time. Back in bot lane, LWX and Crisp just being super respectful as Don't Be's already walking. While they're being respectful in game, Perks was not too respectful out of game. Do and B won't even be the second best mid in the final. Carlos reiterated that, but if you look at the minimap, Doombi has already roamed very early on. I'm looking at the minions, Kobe, and Wonder's still under pressure. Tian's on nearby, but Doombi's gone back to lane. It's really worth highlighting how top laners play when they do not have pressure, when their jungler is the opposite side of the map. Wonder, he didn't go forward for the chase. Tian is still nearby. And it's highlighted because Wonder knows that this is a split map and it's a possible dive being set up. Also, as you can see on the minimap, Dorian B has started to move. All right, Tian has pulled the wave. He's got himself the red buff. There's the overload. Teleport starting to come in. This is a three versus one. Wonder's got mana. He's got flash, but it's a reply already. There's the root down. Wonder gives up first blood to FBX. Caps gets a stun under the tower. Dorian B still doesn't go down. Now Caps is in trouble. Fun plus Phoenix are looking for the double. Caps is trying to swim to safety. Teleport begins to channel in the top lane. Wonder joins, but FPX are on the ball. And two things to look in the aftermath. The teleport's both used there, but the big minion wave also forces Wonder to teleport back. You can see Caps actually now rotating around for a possible answer here. Looking to interrupt it back if he can, but for now it will be a blue buff steal. Potential three buff here for Yang. I really want to highlight how Doon B had started to roam up and walk his way there, but because they needed the extra second, starts teleporting on the minion under tower, even though he had made it halfway up the map. As you can see now, he's almost there already, but they know that because Caps is going to answer, they need the extra second, flashes in, then you can have the W from Tian to guarantee the execute damage there. Just really nicely coordinated here by FPX. But a very extended setup. That's the FPX way. They don't mind to surround you, put up the spears and say, you're in trouble, just give me a second to fully set this up. G2 are usually more instant about their plays, but this time, wasn't in position the Elise to punish, it's to the profit of an extra blue buff.
All right, Caps takes a little bit of damage and do and be the first one to move. Now Wonder Flash, the Sonic Wave, it's a resonating strike. He's trying to escape. He's going down. Yankos arrives. It's too little. It's too late. And the top difference from pressure is fantastic for FPX. And it's a different look. They haven't gone mid lane to try to work with the Nautilus. It's been Tian setting up a camp. He's back again. He absolutely is. Remember we said FPX are great at diving bots. Now they're showing us they're great at diving top. Yankos is caught out and he's going to get squashed like a bug underneath FPX's boot because what goes up must come down. But the flash gets him to safety. Yankos with the quick fingers. I was convinced he was dead and he survives for now. And look at the pace that FPX are setting here. They're not letting G2 reset from the loss of pressure that they have accrued on top side. They keep chaining play after play into G2's weakness. This is something that both of these teams have been so good at. Once they get an early lead, and FPX mining that top side advantage so heavily. And it means that the kill involvements for GP puts them in basically parity, maybe a small lead over the rise here. Trades are still going to be very one-sided to wonder, but it's definitely been a lot of top lane focus from the split map level one on the side of FPX. I like the attitude from FPX. They're not trying to defend where they are weak. They are attacking G2 to force them to change their game plan. Wonder is putting so much pressure individually here onto Gimgun, despite 0-2-0. Yankos waiting in the wings as a potential dive. The overload comes out after the Rune Prison as well. That's a lot of minions denied. Plus 10 CS for now, and as it stands, even on levels. Yankos is looking for the cocoon into the bush, and he won't find it. So G2 will be content with pushing back the pressure. They are still down 700 gold, but Papa Smithy, they concede the Drake. So great heads up play from FPX. Both teams kind of ahead of plays here. Good map, root for, map, map read sorry, from Gimgoon. That is definitely his trademark, often playing on the weak side. Hasn't been that way so far this game, but they're reading the change in tempo, the way the wind is blowing. When it comes to the aggression, they'll take the Drake at Chris. Oh, Death Sentence comes down, as does the Boomerang Blade. Mickey's waiting by with the Devourer. Piercing arrow tags. Chris, I'm keeping my eyes on Tian to see if he wants to go under the tower. Flashes available for both bot laners on G2 sides. Yeah, I mean, one of the nerfs to Tom Kench was the, uh, the cooldown on the Devourer there, so it does open up a bigger window early game. Uh, but as you can see, we're highlighting now, back to Champions Select, where we talk about the Varus and Tom Kench synergy you know, shoring up that weakness of the Varus. If you get caught like that, can come through and save a disastrous play. We're still waiting on the FPX standard playbook, which can still be re-entered this game. It's usually boots of mobility first back from lane for Crisp, where we do see that trio mid lane. Might be a duo, because Tian's level six. Exactly, you have to keep tracking the junglers. This game is so much about playing where you have the numbers advantage. And the one that moves first is able to open up that opportunity of chaining across the map. Let's take a look at how they can chain things across the map on the G2 side, because Papa Smithy, if you remember back at MSI, G2 started to fall behind SKT, and it was the Pike mid-game plays that brought them back into it. Right now, Caps is not activated. The first one to leave mid is B. Again, with that superior push, he's come up with the help of Tian, and there's plates being taken down. And we're seeing the exact opposite play here. It is push up through a big minion wave. Seeing that, Wonder backs off. There's a roam up through the jungle from both B as well as Tian. That means G2 no on the bottom side. Yes, they did lose a minion wave on top side, but they're going to try and deny that same minion wave on bottom. And you notice Perks actually has a back timing here rather than trying to cash in plates. So plate gold is certainly not going to be equalized. I actually don't want the minions to push down this plate, otherwise Perks would not get involvement. All the gold goes to the Tom Kench, and he backs now. This game is really highlighting that ebb and flow of pressure. Once again, the flow now on the side of FPX if they have overloaded top side. I was a huge fan of some of the missing pings there from G2, Kobe. You talked about overloading topside. G2 aware of it. Missing pings as Tian was sitting in the tri bush. Doombi be could have roamed. Doombi, by the way, plus 15 CS. Moby boots just completed. So I'm expecting more running to the side lane. And that's when you start clicking your fingers. Because you should mention that with the Tia map, Pike can actually push out doesn't just fall into a huge CS hole like it has been so far, about 20 CS and match because the Nautilus having the ability of the earlier roam on the Moby Boots rush means that Predator Pike has actually been caught farming in mid lane a lot. Yeah, this is so exciting to me because we're seeing the, the peak of fluid League of Legends where it's all in on roaming around. 
No, first couple of item purchases for Caps do highlight that strategy. Now bottom, will they go for the dive on Perks? There's no Tom Kench. There's no Tom Kench right now. Perks has done some work to clear the minion wave out. I think the piercing arrow did its job. He held on to the hail of arrows. Dredge line will catch out Mickey. Blast cone sends Doofy <laughs> away. Now um, all of a sudden, how did Tia go down? I didn't even see it happen. G2 on the ball. FBX disconnected there, trying to make plays in two areas while the Nautilus was taken. Speaking of Nautilus. All right, the cocoon lands onto the target. Abyssal Voyage is going to be cancelled. Mickey was looking for the dive. Need to catch a quick glimpse on how Tian was caught on and so crucially for G2. It's Perks that picks it up. Yeah, beautiful chain of corruption there from Perks to lock him down. That was a big difference in power too because it was completed jungle item for Tian but only pieces for Yankos and Perks makes a big play for G2. All right, we need to find the cocoon from Yankos. Chris is aware of the situation and he plays the defensive Thresh more than a screen away. Throwing down that lantern to safety. Gimgoon takes a good trade in favor of Wanda. And now all of a sudden, Tian again present on the map. He has been everywhere this game. Yep, looks like he's headed top again with Doon B here as they push mid and look for another opportunity. Here you go, Trevor, asking you shall receive. Perks able to land the corrupting change right on the Gromp. And then, of course, Caps is there to ensure that they get it. And this is a tendency that I'm sure G2's coaching staff have noted. It is that when they go for these players, when they threaten the dives, they tend to stay around for a long time and check a second time, a third time. They're definitely the sort to check the weather report multiple times before planning an outing. This time, caught a little bit there, and that pick does reset some of the good work by FBX. All right, Yankos waiting in the bushes here. Yeah, the gold is just about even 300 the difference. Yankos will get caught up. The cocoon into the tongue lash, but he's caught by the dredge line. Crisp goes in with a death sentence. There's the ignite thrown down. Cambrage comes out as well to do the ultimate. What goes up must go down. There goes Cap. Death from below gets interrupted. That was a fantastic stopwatch. FPX escape. We are going to have some of the best team fights this planet and game has ever seen as both of these teams are trading blow for blow. A lot of tools used by both teams, we have to remember. So very opportunistic for Tian to start up the Rift Herald. That's not going to be a goer for now, and FPX back off. Yeah, that was very close to death for Chris. You mentioned Quick Shot, the stopwatch they had to use, and then immediately he had to flash coming out of it because Perks almost timed a Q from Varus to be able to finish him off afterwards. Now, though, as you're talking about, full resets are coming out. Oh, look at the minimap. One, two, three members, if I count correctly, in the top lane for FPX. G2 Esports are pushing forward. Tian is still snuck in the bush. He's got the Dragon's Rage available. If Perks continues to step forward, and he does, he's caught by the Dragon's Rage. The kick throws him under the tower, and LWX picks up the kill. It's not done yet. Tian goes for the cocoon from Yankos. May have just saved Mickey's life. Doombi continues to change. He dredge lines a little spiraling, and now all of a sudden Caps is waiting in the wings. Level 9 to level nine and it's gonna get spotted out here as he steps forward now all of a sudden Yankos is the one caught by the queue those spiderlings doing some work for doing B bone skewer pulls him backwards but I don't think there's enough damage just yet FPX a thousand gold up three kills to one and they reclaim the lead Tian here is the highlight Getting credit here for the brush attempt from him. Chris actually able to land the hook and set the whole thing up. But because Jan is there, he safeguards in. Dragon kick back, getting the kill, and also chasing down the rest of G2 members, thus not letting them get the play on the map. Here we go, they're all headed mid. Oh, very cheeky play from Caps. Waits for the mini wave to go down, but he's already caught up. Flashes away to safety. The Riptide! The Riptide from Doom B! You don't need to see him when you've got AOE. Now Mickey continues to chase forward. Realm Warp from Wanda. Dredge line to safety, but you can't get away from the rise queue. Yankos goes up and goes down. Perks has rejoined the fray. G2 get their second kill of the game, and they will get some chip damage onto this mid outer turret. Keep your eyes on the minimap. Gim Goon is uncontested in the bot lane and pushing forwards. And with always a jump scare around every corner in this game. Always the backup. The grouping phase started about eight minutes into game number one. Man, the darkness in this game. You don't need a Nocturne for it to be just so scary. You have to consistently move your eyes towards the next objective. Chris right now is setting up the vision game for the setup here on Ocean Drake. FPX are on attack once again. Take a look at the CS differences, by the way. 123 in the mid lane for Doon B. That superior push early has accrued him a 40 CS advantage. G2 will be taking the Rift Herald in the top lane, while another Dragon is secured by FPX in the bottom. 
and Wonder and Caps under some pressure if uh, FPX decides to push. So Herald secured, it's still a thousand gold game, Kobe, and the second dragon picked up by FPX. I like this move from G2 because they're trying to get the Rift Herald on top side in exchange for the dragon and get some value out of the extra teleport. But Wonder now stuck under the tower, 1v4. All right, let's see what he can do. Rune puts it into Overload, gets caught up by the death sentence, and that was just flawless from FPX. They pick up an easy kill. They'll be able to pick up the tower, but the tower first blood bonus goes to G2 Esports with the help of the Rift Herald. Keep oh. in mind, it's still a 1,400 gold difference, Papa Smitty. Yeah, gold in different corners, but remember, this is a very he healthy Rift Herald. Could be two turrets here, an advantage that is gonna be felt, and a GPO is drawn already. You can see FBX trying to rotate the Sivir into mid lane to hold this wave and allow the rest of the team to push on the minimap. You cannot race with a Rift Herald. Perks is just ushering the Rift Herald straight up to the inhibitor before FBX had even broken secondary turret. And it's even more big than that. They've been behind this entire game, behind the skirmish, behind the eight ball, and they are losing the turret tempo race. They're getting it slower as this Rift Herald draws a huge, tra uh, huge cheer from the Paris crowd. Paris are loving it. It's five kills to two, but make no mistake, FPX are currently in control. As we now transition into the, the mid-game phase where a lot of skirmishes and, and fights can break out, Kobe, I have to ask, FPX, you said they were a mid to late game team fight team. They have to feel happy with the lead they've generated already. FPX are very happy right now because they have Trinity Force on Gangplank level 11 for the level two ultimate that can come through. So all they have to do is give that Sivir speed boost to the Nautilus Thresh and look for those two hooks onto G2. Now G2 has a harder deal, but they found a pick of their own. Yeah, they absolutely have. That will be secured by perks. Nikki. He arrives just in the nick of time. Now, this will give some pressure into the mid lane. We've talked about the importance of timing, Trevor. Every pick is another 20 seconds of extra pressure, and G2 will use that to try and get half of mid turret, maybe even the full thing. The dredge light doesn't find a target, and Doombe maybe wants to be happy. Death from below thrown out from a cat, and that's the tower lead now in favor of G2. The gold lead as well, and one simple ward, one simple pick gives G2 control of the mid lane. And that's the thing that G2 have, regardless of gold lead, as a bone screw is there just to show Doin B that Caps is around, is they have an insane pick come. If they're ever shrouded in darkness, they get those picks and they subvert team fights. Here we go. Yeah, they absolutely do. Realm Warp's coming up, but it interrupted. That's already a kill onto Wonder. LWX threw down the ultimate. Six kills to three. Two dragons up, but the gold is irrelevant right now. Gimgoon, however, will equalize the towers. And if you look at the minimap, there's a lot of wards in the northern quadrant in favor of LPX. And look at these two teams going blow for blow. Quick shot, one pick into a turret. Answer here from FPX as soon as they see Wonder in the river. The flash, no hesitation from Crisp to answer it and get the exact same back. Now G2, power play on bottom half. And look, there's just not much gold to separate, even though you'd love it as an FPX fan. It's only about a thousand gold between the two teams we see where it's centered. A lot of that Rift Herald play has reset what was just a growing, snowballing lead in terms of map play and also just gold lead from the side of FPX. Now, I'm very interested to see how these next five to 10 minutes play out because when G2 Esports fell behind SKT in the semifinals, they found crucial team fights to bring themselves back into the game. I feel like at this tournament, FPX is a different beast and it will be a more difficult challenge for G2. Exactly, you have to play to the champions that your enemy has drafted here. And G2 have a lot to highlight because they've got Rise for side lane, they've got the Predator boots, plus the Ghost Blade for caps. So if they can rotate Varus over to hold the mid lane, then they start to look for those picks to get back into it. But one of the unique things to look for for the fans at home is we don't have wave clear mid laners here. They have teleport, they have hard CC. They don't want to be caught in a side lane at all. So that means we're going to see a lot more fighting as often we'll be playing around one or two lanes maximum rather than the three lane fan out you often see in games like this. And there's a very, very big difference between having your AD carry in mid lane clearing waves with the mid turret and without. Now Cap's going for a play under tower. Oh, it takes so much damage when you miss the skill shot. You can't go for those dives. And Caps walks away with his tail between his legs. All right, here we are. A power play on the blue buff side of the map. But there is a ward to scout it out. 
All right, so FPX have got some sort of a numbers advantage. G2 sniff it out. Look, Volatile spidling. I think that just spotted out two members of G2. Crisp is now making his way forward. Teleport coming in from Wonder on the tower. The Bone Skewer catches Chris. That's a death from below as G2 will even the goal. But what can they take? They can start up the Drake here and stop the Snowball. And G2 are so smart at sussing out these combat puzzles that often games of League of Legends in this meta turn into. The moment they got an inkling of there being members on the flank, they took them out as five. And once again, vision will be so important because both of these teams rely on the picks. Chain of corruption will tag do and be. Dredgeline pulls him to safety. The cocoon from Yankos. It will not secure the kill. It will not secure another. It's 20 minutes on the map. This is such a tense game. But G2, they continue trading blow for blow. And I want to highlight what's not on your screen is the mini map. Both side lanes pushing in opposite directions here for G2 as well as FPX. We mentioned these teams have a lot of similar strengths. So while the mid core of both teams are looking for the picks with the Elise, with the Varus there, with the Tom Kench, they are also trying to get the side lane pushing in their advantage to get the extra standing goal. And I love that you pointed out with the arrow there, because the sort of thing that's lost, because people say, oh, it's a death match. Oh, they're just fighting all the time. But it's the setup and the side lanes that allows it to happen. And speaking of side lane oh, setup. Fantastic setup, Papa Smithy. Teleport comes in. If BX is still good at numbers advantage, Crisp will arrive and captures in so much trouble. He's going to get taken out. Oh! The real wolf from Wanda! But now they're not done just yet. All of a sudden the death center just comes out. Ignite goes down. Wanda's running for his life. Tian gets the sonic wave, does not follow the resonating strike. Caps tries to escape, goes for a swim and does so for now. G2 get up, but FPX's play to set it up managed to avoid defeat. This is definitely a world championship game. Quick shot, so close, the margin of error here. Caps able to just utilize the full mobility of Pike to get into the edge of the Realm Warp as it was about to disappear. Now it's a reset as they're trying to hold lane though. I'll take a look at the mini map there. A lot of members of FPX sitting in the northern quadrant as Caps catches the top lane wave. He sees FPX on top of that control ward and now G2 looking for a hunt. Baron won't get tagged by the skewer nor will another champion and the Volatile Spidling goes wide. Timing is in the favor of FPX because they're the ones that have the split push going for them. They've got Gimgoon on the Gangplank in the bottom lane, you can see on your mini-map. So G2 trying to force them off of Baron, but FPX gaining one extra lane of momentum. And you look at the wards here, you can see the G2 are leaving the vision behind as they fish for picks. We're gonna go to bot lane here. The flash was super necessary because <laughs> the moment this Realm Warp is on, I didn't think Caps could even get in. Yeah, exactly, because he got slowed down there. Even with the mobility oh. of Pike, Barely flashes to the edge. The margin there of error is so incredibly small. Wanda's screaming, I'm helping, I'm <laughs> helping. And Caps manages to make it out. He, by the way, one, one, and three, just sitting on one and a half items for now. But G2 has sneakily picked up a thousand gold lead. I think it's gonna be the least important stat in this game because setup and execution of these team fights, as we have already seen, is what's gonna dictate who comes out on top. But Trevor, I feel like the eye test, you'd be surprised by it, right? You'd be like, wait, it feels like FBX has been on top. Where did this gold lead come from? Those were the fundamentals that allowed them to stay competitive against SKT in the first game of the semifinal. They are so smart about always playing the side lanes and keeping competitive in CS numbers, which keeps them competitive in gold. And remember, people should not just look at gold because there are other things. Gangplank X extra gold, Pike shares extra gold with the ultimate. Here is a setup though. What's very important is the control of that setup. Vision around Baron. Chain of Corruption tags a target. There's no follow-up. Remember, if G2 pick a fight in the Baron pit against Nautilus, Siva, Gangplank, that's not really a place you want to be. Cannon Barrage is available, and uh, Chain of Corruption was just used. So Gimgoon steps up to the plate, does not find a fight yet. But one of the things we are seeing is FPX need to find an answer. When G2 put pressure down, they are gaining a few more benefits outside of just the Dragons, but it's FPX with control of the Baron picks. And while these teams are very similar, there are some key differences where G2 have very good burst damage, more for single target. FPX have a lot of AoE that they can try and bring to Brunt. This is what you want to do if you can funnel the enemy team into a smaller corridor where they can actually get more value there.
Another difference is the fact that Ryze will just outmatch any opponent in the side lane as the scaling comes up. Another six minutes on the Rod of Ages to complete that. So even with some magic resist incrementally put in, they're going to have to try to force those fights and maybe overforce, as otherwise Wonder will take side lane objectives. Love this point because if you can open up the map, Papa Smithy, one of my favorite strategies that has evolved over the years is the trailing split pusher. And Caps is a is on a perfect champion to play that role. If you hover behind the split pushing rise and the opponent send two people, you surprise, you go for the burst kill. We have to align on the language. I call it piggyback ganks, where there you, you both have TP to piggyback over. Let me to on! Top lane side, <laughs> here we go. I'm a fan of the piggyback ganks this game. And that's the third dragon secured by FBX. Double clouds is definitely gonna benefit them as they want to continue to move around this map. Caps does get spotted out by an FPX ward, but important to note the synchronized recalls on the side of G2 allows them to regroup up on the map, push back for some control around that Baron pit. And now we're moving into this barren phase of the game. And for chaotic teamfights, one thing that you should look for as a G2 fan is the fact that we have a Rage Blade build here coming through from Perks. He actually needs to warm up on a minion wave or targets before he actually gets that double hit passive and gets going in a team fight. And this is a sort of game with as many threats as there are that you actually need a certain type of terrain to fight around to get that amount of time. And also, when you are thinking through these possible picks and these possible team fights, you actually have to opt into who is going to burn cooldowns from your opponent. Because there are so many critical ones and squishy members on the team, if you are G2, you're looking at Yankos. He's got the fully completed Zonias and at least also has Repel built in. So while not a tank, you do want the Elise to bait out some of those big cooldowns. If you repel a Nautilus ult, yeah. it changes the game for your team. They also have to talk about the positioning of Mickey with the rest. So continually press tab, look for these stopwatches, look for these Zanya's completions, but also the positioning on the members with that stasis. And when it comes to these vision wars where someone puts down their wards, they have to back away and reset the wards and go and buy when the enemy can then take over vision, I actually think FPX will struggle to reclaim vision against a G2 camp, because even the Lantern, control ward down, you're gonna be caught going for a face check, and you already mentioned G2 have multiple ways to make them untargetable, like the Repel and like the Tom Kench Devout. Now there is one thing that is always a huge benefit on the side of FPX, outside of just doing B, setting up a fantastic play. The Protobalt into the hook, and Mickey gets chunked out. While that's going on, Kim Goon almost picks up a solo kill in the bottom lane. FPX have found themselves a gigantic advantage on two sides of the map. Also important to note, Rapid Fire Cannon picked up by LWX. The 600 CS Civil win condition is always a possibility. Quick shot, the reward. Rewards for that pick are enormous. Mid tower, the last of the outer defenses going down for G2, make it incredibly more difficult to try and defend in the vision wars around Baron. That was Doinby using the proto belt to get into range to try and land the hook onto Mickey. What a big critical play from the star player of FPX. And a 27 minute mid lane turret doesn't sound like a big thing, but Kobe, you're right on the money. Look at this. Siege comp, they've got almost no range on the side of FBX, so they needed a pick like that to ever actually get the turret that's core to Baron defenses, that mid lane out. All right, Kim Goon will now run into Wonder. Both of them level 15, Wonder got the first trade, but doesn't follow up with any more. And outside of just clearing out the vision, FPX weren't able to get more than the tower. It is a huge win for them. Doing B, making the move that counts. Yeah, I mean, people have criticized the champion pool for so long. Uh, you know, some people advocates and want to see Doing B on the world stage proving his style. You see proof right there in that play. This is why he plays these types of champions to create openings for his team in this case. Now, FBX have to look to the next step for themselves. They want to use that speed advantage from Sivir Ultimate whenever it is up to enable those two champions to try and find that hook. Caps, by the way, level 13. It's matching a doing B. Top laners have got most of the experience this game. Wonder is up 80 CS over Gimgoon and still playing that side lane. But we haven't had that huge explosive team fight. It feels like if one team is able to win it, they could either take it in Hib or a Baron and get huge control in this game. And it's getting much more difficult now for G2 
to play to their champions. Because FPX have such a good possible team fight here, Sivir, as you mentioned, quick shot, extremely good and well protected uh, damage output for that force. Uh, it's going to be very hard for G to actually find that kill onto the back line and remove those AoE crits. And that's the really important point is that in the open, you just can't win as G2 is comp. In a 5v5 where everyone opts into it, it's not going to work. But they always have that pick CC opportunity if they get a vision reset. So actually look down the middle here, look at the scoreboard, see the control wards put together. Stonebeak could be caught. All right, uh, who's catching who though? Because I think there's more support for FPX to respond. <laughs> Apps escapes from the dredge line. We are 30 minutes into game one of the championship final. And truthfully, we still don't know who's going to come out on top. FPX have got Pryo in the mid lane. They do not have control wards. They don't want to face check. So again, this awkward setup. All right, here's the potential team fight. Doombi stepping forward. Zona takes some damage from that Volatile Spidling with the Banshee's Veil. Wonder feels more confident to step up. A 30-minute Infernal could be very valuable. Dredge line is dodged away from as the Drake is secure, but now G2 are split. That's at least some CC to interrupt. The Chain of Corruption will start to spread, and it's Mickey that gets tagged. He's locked down. He's knocked up. He's dead. LWX is on a rampage. The Siva is terrifying. There goes the Teleport. The Chain oh! the Tian, you beauty. Gets the double kill for FPX. The flash to gap close, but Doinby might die here. He might just indeed. Two more teleports thrown down. Realm Warp's coming out, and then managed to escape. Wandering Caps run for their lives. Three members of G2 Esports are down. Death from below is available for Caps. Can he snipe Doinby? He does! He gets the kill. Ten kills to five. Now it's a two, B, four inside the pits. The G2 solo laners, all that's left for them to try and defend the Baron. Quick shot. There's a death from below available to Caps. He manages to get the you are one to take so much damage from the barrels. Go straight in, but the ulti does nothing. Baron's been listed to help G2, and finally, Wonder goes down. Gimgoon is low on HP. Eight seconds left before Perk survives, but it's FPX that get the Baron. They will claim their prize of Baron buff to empower the push. All right, Gimgoon, will he find trouble from Caps? Yes, he does, and not gonna go for the kill just yet. Caps now continues to chase. Abyssal Voyage comes in from Mickey, but the Tongue Lash is sidestep. Gimgoon escapes. 3-0-4 on that gangplank. It started with him, and it may end with him. I just want to highlight how quickly the decisions have to be made after this play. Instantaneous from all teams. Infernal Drake picked up by two. They go into evasive maneuvers, trying to kite down towards the bottom half of the map. But with the Silver Ultimate and with Nautilus, immense crowd control, they are split apart, Papa. And then it becomes just a buddy story here of trying to allow oh. Perks to escape. The kick to interrupt with the knock up there. Beautifully done. You see the cheering here from backstage. Yeah, Yankos wanted to get in between so that uh, the Q wouldn't land, but you just kick him right through, still going to get the knock up there. And that led to what we're seeing on screen. Barroned up, FPX coming for those inhibitor turrets. It's unbelievable performance from FPX. If you look down the kill scores, 304, 316, 126, 403. Of the team's 11 kills, the kill participation is extremely high. It's what we wanted to see from FPX. Push out a lane, roam to a side lane. The difference is it was Gimgoon's gangplank with the cannon barrage that was the recipient of this game. And he sets LWX for another kill. 386 CS on that Sivir. With the Baron buff empowered, the inhibitor touch going low. But Wanda is rattling across the damage onto FPX, but he's caught out the dredge line into the flay. Wanda's looking for the Realm Wolf, and he won't escape. 603 LWX is dominating. G2 did so much damage, but they couldn't finish it all. FPX are able to get what they came for as well, Quick Shot. Inhibitor in the mid lane is down. Will be constant pressure for them to get off. And getting the Baron, which was such a difficult ask for the team comp they had, is the tonic to actually get those 5v5s in open areas where we already outlined early. There's just no response from D2's comp. The moment Caps fishes for a hook, his health bar is deleted. Again, so much of this game has been about finding picks, hitting skill shots, and and then using those openings immediately to get more from your opponent. Look how FPX do not hesitate to burn all their cooldowns 
to look for one more advantage. This is the way that you can snowball one play into the next and to get the most out of it. And you see how low FPX are had Caps been alive with Death From Below. In the melee, in the AoE, that ultimate reset could be a game changer, but he was not. So the inhibitor goes down. G2 are 4,400 gold behind, and you can see that gigantic spike from the dragon fight to Baron. And Papa Smithy, FPX are in complete control of game number one. And I think the one consistent through this topsy-turvy game of action has been that we felt the impact of Doimby's Nautilus above Caps's Pike style pick at the end consistently. You understand the theory behind it, starting boots, going Predator, and having the ability to roam, but never getting the lane control to actually match Doinby, who was three, four times ganking top and bar. And this is Doinby's most iconic champion mm -hmm. for the mid lane, because it is so abnormal, because no other mid laners fully embrace it to this style, and everyone has always posed questions and say, okay, but prove it on the world stage. Here you go, Papa Smithy. I submit Exhibit A. And yet, oh, we see the, oh, Bone by Sivir, they want to catch Yankos. They absolutely do. Yankos flashes over the wall. Now look at the minimap. The rest of FPX were setting up for a potential Elder Drake. Perks gets caught by the Nautilus ultimate, and while the cannon minion is still there, G2 Esports concede the Elder. They're going for the inhib, but the dredge line tags down Wonder. He's in trouble. Doom B goes golden. Another death sentence comes out. Devour from Mickey buys enough time. Caps, death from below. Kills down Doom B. This is a 5v4, but the HP is low. Chris gets tagged. Caps goes down. It's another one. But look at the damage from Wonder. He's looking for LWX. Grim Goon turns around with a parlay. LWX gets the boomerang, gets the ricochet. The round warp comes out, and G2 escape. Oh, G2 remain on the attack, even while FPX have the upper hand. And in that, they open up the base. And just remember during SKT, they conceded the Barons to get the inhibs. This is a game about pressure and control of the map. And this is why G2 is so beloved. They never go quietly into the night. They will always try to find a counter punch. They are impossible to KO. Exactly, Papa Smithy. They will always look to surprise you by remaining on the attack on the offensive. And even if FPX close this game, there will still be lingering doubts. Not often the case when you win game one of a World Final. Mickey looks like he's going to get caught out by Gimgu once again. 4-0-8 on that gangplank. Throws down another stopwatch, and while Caps is arriving to see him go down, that is another kill, another death that is unneeded and unnecessary at this point. FPX strike back again. And guess what? The Baron is soon to arrive. In only 30 seconds, with a Elder Dragon 3 Elemental Drake buff, FPX have full control over the area. They're hunting indeed. Yankos has got a Banshees. No flash available to him. And on the minimap, we've got no vision. The Observer's building the tension, highlighting what G2 can see. FBX are putting pressure in the top lane. And as what we can see, Quickshot, they're moving to the bottom side of the map. Again, trying to remain on the attack, even though FBX have more to gain with Baron coming over from that side. They still want to make the offensive play. They rush the minions ahead with the Rise Realm Warp, and they're going to race it. Look at the minimap, though. The rest of FBX, they've peeled onto the Baron. Recall's coming out for doing B. That's a three-man Baron stat. Teleports are coming down. No, that's correction to the top lane. Perks manages to make his way up. So Baron will be conceded here as Wonder concedes the flash to run away. Imgun is chasing. He's got himself the IX, the Essence Reaver. The Baron is secured. This is the second of the game in conjunction with Elder. FPX should be in control. But G2 don't care about shoots. And I love those conditional languages in a match like this where FBX has been packing the punch or had the scaling. It's still conditional because G2 still gives you questions to answer. And if you're too slow in this meta, you can still lose. Gentlemen, coming into this game, we were discussing how FBX and G2 have redefined how League of Legends is played. And we are already seeing all of the arguments being made. Both of these teams continually shooting their shots, taking their looks. FBX have not buckled under the pressure where a lot of teams get surprised by the constant offensive moves while G2 is down. FBX have remained calm, and this is the key to game number one. Now, with the Baron and the Elder Dragon 
They're able to push on top side, and they should be able to get the rest of the rewards. G2, though, throw another counter punch on the bottom half of the map. You can see in the mini map. They get the double TP down bot lane, but what has to shake up on the top side, and can a TP flank undo this three man push? All right, we're going to have to find out. Doombi is able to defend for now. Teleport is coming up. That's the recalls now coming up for G2 Esports. The top lane inhibitor is going to fall, and the mid lane inhibitor is exposed as well. FBX have used the teleport from Doombi. They're going to try and get two inhibitors here. G2 recall. All right, inhib number one hasn't fallen just yet, but it will in a moment. There it does. Both of them fall down. Caps manages to find the bone skewer, and G2 are looking for an initiation. By the way, Gimgoon did not leave that bottom lane. So two inhibs secured in favor of FBX. They still have a minute and a half on Baron. And another three minutes to Elder if G2 can survive. And you're in this awkward spot as G2 where you want to walk up posture and draw a GP teleport so your piggyback gank down the bot side, your pushing game can actually work. They don't get that TP. Gingun holds on to it. If all TPs are down, there's still a split push scenario for G2. FBX marching ahead here. They have remained calm. They still have a minute and 20 seconds to work with the Baron buff as well. Teleport available for LWX as well as Gimgoon. And it looks like it will be a reset. 40 minutes into the game, and it is a 7,000 gold lead for FPX. LWX sold his boots, is at full Siva build, and 26 CS shy of what is considered the win condition for Siva. 500 equals victory. Now, it should be even more confident than that right now, with a minute on Baron. Railwolf comes out, and Wanda's going to get caught up in the next sentence. It's another kill. It's another pick. It's another moment where FPX are shining. 60-second death timer, Kobe, with super minions in multiple lanes and Baron to defend. That's probably going to be game number one. Quick shot. FPX with the 5v4 advantage will march on the Nexus turrets. Chain of Corruption is available. Yankos gets Caught out, the Devourer's buying some time. There goes Caps forward. Chris manages to stay alive. That was a fantastic flash. The King of Corruption is starting to sprint. Chaikos buys some time with the Hourglass and Doombi goes low. LWX gets another. TN finds a second. The Nexus Tower falls as well. FPX are looking for one last kill. Not going to find it just yet. And the Nexus gets focused. The Nexus gets killed after the ace. And FPX strike first in the finals. First Blood, first Dragon, first Baron, first Nexus. And truthfully, it does not play out that easily. Big smiles on the G2 faces, but FPX opened the finals with a statement. And I think G2...